Hi everyone, welcome to this presentation. My name is Sampat Pramod, and in this presentation, I will be explaining about leveraging long read sequencing technology, especially nanopore sequencing technology for brass catch genomics and crop improvement. As an alumni of TNAU, I'm really happy to be part of this great event. I'd like to thank the organizing community for giving me this wonderful opportunity to share our work here. On this occasion, I'd like to thank a couple of my mentors, Dr. Santhil and Dr. Ravindran, for their wonderful support and mentorship since my postgraduate studies. They are one of the important reasons for what I'm being here. And thank you very much, sir. So today's outline, today's presentation outline is introducing nanopore sequencing as a fairly new technology. I like to spend a little bit of time explaining about what is nanopore sequencing and also how we use that nanopore sequencing technology to assemble a highly contiguous uh, genome assembly for Brassica and Nika genome. And then we are uh, using that you know, nanopore sequencing technology to explore for the structure variants for the Brassica crop improvement purpose. Reference genomes have revolutionized plant genome research. However, it to produce a telomere to telomere assembly. That RRFC's genome, first plant genome, was released in 2000. However, still many gaps has not been resolved due to highly repetitive nature in the heterochromatic regions. Even some gaps in the equipramatic as well. That's fairly uh, mostly due to that putting those puzzle into that gaps is hard using the technology we have. Similarly, for the human genome, 2001, the trap genome was released. However, still it's not a complete genome yet. When you have the bigger puzzle pieces, it's easy, it's able to make it in complete structure. This is the concept of uh, long read sequencing. So when you have longer reads, you can solve the puzzles or uh, finish the gaps well. This it just shows that uh, improvement in human genome sequencing. Since it was developed in 2001, there has fairly any uh, improvement made until 2010. After the introduction of long-read sequencing, recently a telomere to telomere assembly of X chromosome has been completed and for other chromosomes in straight progress. So this is the importance of this long-read sequencing. And here, this long-read sequencing, especially nanopore and PacBio, are, are commercially available sequencing technologies, which, is, which helps to achieve high quality, high continuous genoma, genomes. Before that, second generation sequence technologies, which is especially is dominated by Elimina HCMIC sequencing. The sequences or lengths are less than 100 base pair or 500 base pair. Though the, the throughput, the yield of H uh, is highly high, we can't uh, use that sequence to get a really complete genome. On the other hand, uh, radians are high in the longer sequencing technology, which helps to get a better assembly. In addition, there is a scaffold technology such as bio-nano optical mapping, which also helps to put those context, uh, assembled context into sort of from some level. So this is one of the current uh, long read sequence technology called PacBio, which uses the concept of sequencing by synthesis. Uh, single molecule real-time sequencing where uh, uh, the DNA of the interest is uh, pre uh, DNA of interest is sequenced uh, by harnessing natural process called DNA replication. Yeah, single strand circular DNA is created by ligating hairpin adopters on both ends of the target double strand DNA. So then the polymerase is then um, amplified or sequenced this region by incorporating fluorescent label nucleotides. This emission has been recorded. Uh, so you still see that a lot of errors in this process. However, consensus accuracy, since this can be done, uh, the sequence, the circular sequences can be done many times. So we can get the consensus accuracy of 99.9. .9. 
the rail length of 10 to 100 kb in size for this particular technology and the end fifties are 10 to 15 kb on the other hand nano per sequencing which is native stand sequencing approach it doesn't involve any synthesis and that it has less rate accuracy compared to back bio but the rate lengths are really high you can get really high read length and then 50 as well and 50 is 50 percent of reads have like some a minimum of that particular length in a uh, sequence run i have a video of two minutes uh, about two minutes to to introduce about how the nano sequencing works i thought it would be interesting to show here as well so here this is the minion flow cell containing uh Menand's device containing a flow cell. That's flow cell, you're loading your library. The library contains DNA or RNA for interest attached with uh, adapter sequence and motor protein. So your library is loaded on a flow cell. Flow cell contains number of about 1,028 nanopores. With the help of tether, your DNA of interest is placed on the nanopore. Due to this negatively charged, the DNA is pulled, sand is pulled into the other side. But this electrical or ionic current is Flow on the pore as well, it got disturbed or dis so this disruption is recorded as a schedule graph. This process continues until the pore dies. As I said, let's the DNA or RNA of interest is inserted into this nanopore where this distraction of your uh, ionic change by the DNA of interest is then recorded as a, as a graph or squiggly graph, which is then converted into basis using machine learning algorithms. Per second, more than 400 base pair can be passed through this four, which then uh, is recorded as a stat graph, as I said. Due to this rapid moment there has a lot of errors or uh, inaccuracies in calling the basis this has been improved dramatically by uh, increasing the chemistry of each of these components in the nanoprobe for example membranes chemistry or motor protein chemistry nanoprobe chemistry so everything got increased uh, i mean uh, got up upgraded so the error rate compared to the earlier version like to the for it's only 80 percent uh, 20% error rate to less than 5% error rate. Apart from DNA sequencing, you can do direct RNA sequencing using this nanopore, nanopore technology where you can able to obtain full length transcript uh, and, and isoform. It, it's helpful to identify that isoforms in much, much better compared to the short routes. Compared to uh, DNA sequencing of nanopore, it's less throughput, but still it's useful. Apart from that, using that same raw DNA reads, nanopore reads, you can able to identify bases which is methylated or non-methylated. So you can see the calls uh, are different, uh, uh, different pattern, uh, and then the squiggly graph when methylated and non-methylated cytosines. This is done basically using uh, a bisulfur, original bisulfur sequence approach when you, send, uh, when you use this short technology where it does convert those bisulfide, um, uh, uh, use the bis uh, converts the methylated cytosine to cytosine or cytosine to hero acid. Nanobo have various instruments uh, and gives different yields depends on the instrument you use. This Menion, this, uh, this uh, flagship instrument, uh, gives about like 10 to 30 giga data for flow cell for, and it's 
and the and the gridiron is a five times submarine ion and promethean is for more high depth therapeutic bigger genomes we use this promethean for our analysis of nano of naplas genome so summarizing importance of nanopore technology it is comparatively less cost compared to the other other sequence technology available uh, like uh, back back bio so it, it has really long read length and it can do the native sequencing of dna rna and multiplexing as well possible so for example this many and starter kit is a uh, uh, it's about thousand dollar which includes uh, flow cell as well as uh, reagents one of the drawbacks is uh, error rate like 0.1 to 15 uh, percent especially for the raw rate so that's uh, that's can be corrected using the uh, preliminary rates and sometimes you get that homopolymer error and then low yield consistency in the second part it's so using this nano over sequencing technology taking advantage of this all the long rates so we able to develop i really high contiguous genome assembly for breast can negra genome which able to identify answers uh, active centromeres and the ancestral breast tissue so this is a breast can negra one of the deployed uh, genome in use triangle where you can see that other deployed breast coloration breast carapa and then three other allotted parts uh, which is formed by merging uh, de deployed. For example, this breast canapa is one of the important oil seed crop in Canada. It formed by merging breast coloration and breast crop. A 10 chromosome from 9 chromosome from Laurasia forms 19 chromosome breast canapa. The black mustard is 8 chromosome, about 600, uh, 550 to 600 mega size. Interestingly, this is belongs to Brassicacea family. Uh, which is uh, that first genome sequence start with the and have quite information it can be directly transferable to this uh, crops so it is uh, one of the important crop for evolutionary aspect evolution analysis as well so here this shows that our uh, assembly strategy for breast canigra genomes we did assemble uh, illumina based only and as well as nano long read based so it's NA100 is the uh, line name where uh, for the Illumina we used 100x uh, and, and the sub D Nova assembler. And then um, so the super scaffolds are uh, get close using the parent traits, using genetic maps to anchor to form into pseudo chromosomes. Here we use about 64x Kanu corrected uh, raw read, the raw reads. Yeah. Using 72x, uh, we ended up some 64x kernel corrector raw reads. Uh, using that 64x raw reads using small Dino assembly, we assemble them in, in, in the quantic level assembly. And then error correction using linear reads done as error rates were high. So using genetic map, we then form make it to final uh, pseudo chromosome level. Series. Similarly, for the C2 line, which is uh, another line, we use a less coverage to test that uh, and we use high c scaffolding approach to develop a sort of concept. so what is the kind of correction here um, so you see you can see this is a, a nanopore reads map taken as the reference genome you know? and you see that this is a raw reads have high number of errors these these purple lines when you use a kind of correction it does correct reads uh, the same reads using that uh, read nanoporids to correct the nanoporid. So, because there are errors are not random, so it can be corrected. So, that's where we just gave it up to 99.98%. This table shows the summary of uh, three different Brassica Negra assemblies. So, here uh, NA100 Illumina based assembly and NA100 nanopore based assembly. So, for the comp for comparison, I just try to show some of the uh, facts uh, 
in, in NA100 illuminar and nanopore. So here you can see that assembly size is more than uh, like 50, more than 50 MB got assembled in this nanopore compared to this illumina based. And then, so total number of sequences uh, is 58 compared to 19,000. So which means it's highly, highly fragmented, it's highly continuous assembly. So all the 500 uh, mega, about 506 mega is assembled into 58 contexts. So obviously that we expect that high quantity can 50, which is 50% uh, of the sequence of um, more than 50, 17 mega size. Be able to assemble highly um, uh, repetitive uh, regions. For example, we able to assemble 40, 54% compared to 41 in the Illumina. Similarly, this is a CP genome uh, or another genome one test with this. And this has less contiguity because we used uh, mm, this low coverage, little lower coverage than this. Um, and also that N50, concrete N50s are really low. However, it's able to achieve 537. So when we plot uh, that our N quantic N50 uh, with the assumed to take in front of the assembled punches from genomes, we able to figure out that ours is one of the best N50, quantic N50. Uh, this is achieved because of this nanopore or long red sequence technology. As you can see, like lots of uh, the N50s are really low when you use that. Uh, long short read sequence technologies for before Illumina. When you use the PAC Bio or ONT, getting like really higher uh, rates, I mean, higher end 50s. All right. So, this is a comparison, a paradise comparison of uh, two different assembly uh, based on the Illumina of NA100 Illumina and NA100 Nanopore. It's showing uh, how how that genome or where it got assembled more. So for example, here is the chromosome one of uh, diff two different assemblies showing that this particular region is not assembled in this chromosome or by this Illumina assembly. Similarly, you can see that lots of regions are missing in this, got like more assembled. Similarly, uh, for the C2 genome, this is another Nika genome, we can able to see that, that it got uh, assembled in the way uh, in a under long way assembly. And interestingly, we can see that there is a, uh, a inversion in this, in this chromosome. So when we dig further into what are those uh, fragments got assembled more into that nanopro assembly than that Illumina based shorted assembly, we found out that this regions, so this is a chromosome six compared against uh, short read versus long read. As you can see, we plotted these are repeats and then genes. These, uh, this ribbon shows the synthetic uh, regions. So, so these regions, these regions are uh, are highly highly uh, occupied or are, are by repeats and we have like less number of genes able to find which is not able to assemble this is typical in child reading technology that's why you can't able to uh, assemble them so when we dig further into that region we will be able to see that region containing uh, a specific family LTR called ALE LTR, which is amplified less than, which is quite recent, amplified less than 1 million years ago. Like quite elements are present in there. We will be able to see that three chance is uh, having less methylation, uh, which is corresponding with the whole genome by set of uh, nanopore. So those LTR elements uh, interestingly, contains nested insertion pattern, which means that a element is inserted into another element. For example, this particular uh, element is 15K, but it has three different elements inside, like 15K element contain 9K inside and then 3K. So these are the uh, size 15,000 base pair 
element, uh, this is not able to um, assemble clearly when you uh, use a short read sequence, but long reads does really well on this. So this is just a one chromosome V uh, in V5, but we able to identify almost all the chromosome having nested in such an event. <coughs> Excuse me. Furthermore, so this assembly, this nanoprobe based assembly can able to um, show or ask uh, so that we got assembled that central medication, which is really hard uh, using when you assemble using solitary technology because those are highly repetitive in nature. Uh, is, uh, and and it is um, it's very hard to assemble them. So so this is showing that we got assembled uh, that region and which is also have uh, uh, so so this this is a um, uh, centromeric associated repeats. There are a few repeats uh, transposons have association with the. Uh, binding only are present only in the centromeric regions. So this distribution shows that, so this uh, centromeric regions uh, are present uh, in this uh, in this location, which also supported by hypomethylation of uh, methylome data. We done methylome analysis on both nanopore as well as uh, whole genome bisulfide for this particular genome. We see that over 97 percent correlation with both, uh, uh, both approach. So it's good that you can use this nanopore read for our methylome analysis. You don't have to do that whole genome based it. In addition, we also able to identify ancestor centromere location, which is which is quite interesting. So summarizing this part, we uh, able to achieve highly highly contiguous assembly of breast and negra genome uh, using long read sequencing technology. Though error rates are high, we managed to get uh, uh, like highly accurate uh, by uh, using error correction, various error correction, like kernel correction or lumina based correction. And we also able to locate the centromere based on hyper hypermethylation, hypermethylation uh, uh, and then repeat uh, centromeric processor repeat distribution. We found that the uh, centromere contains early elements. Which is present in this transition manner. So we use this approach to uh, our, our technology to characterize the structure variants uh, for try to improve in brassica and wheat, especially canola. Structural variants are uh, usually like more than 50 base pair to more than uh, two mega or more. Uh, there are different kinds such as deletions, inversion, uh, tandem duplication. Um, in interspar duplication, inversion, translocation, and copy number variations. They are poorly characterized due to that sequencing technology available. For example, when you use a short reach sequence technology, it doesn't cover the complete uh, uh, structure variance because it's quite weaker in size. So it's just really uh, uh, it's hard, uh, or, uh, hard to predict that's a real uh, structure variance. Cover. When you, however, when you use the long read sequence, you can able you can uh, accurately detect or de de identify those structure variants. Structure variants is not only create a structure difference, but also it has influence uh, in various expression variation. It does impact the important phenotypes. Uh, such as ease and resist uh, resistance or abiotic different mm, mm, abiotic stresses. So this is showing how you see uh, sector variance using long reads. This is one of the deletion related duplication event, and the deletion for 741 based that there's a single read showing that there is a gap. So this region is deleted. Uh, this region contains a uh, retrotransposer. You can see though. There are a lot of error, errors on the reads, but still you can able to identify the structure variant besides these long reads. Similarly, uh, the duplication, uh, so you can see the double the coverage of these regions or that region is, is duplicated. It's about like 4,000, uh, more than 4,000 base pair size. So which is 
and generally hard to identify using a, a short read technology. Importantly, when you use the structure variant as a marker, it can be able to precisely associate with the important triads here. That's Manhattan flat shows that uh, this particular species in triads highly uh, correlate or more precisely identified when you use the structure variance marker compared to that SNP markers. The thresholds are really high when you use the structure variance. Recently, one of the study uh, in Tomato where it uses longer sequencing technology to predict the structure more variants in, in 100 diverse uh, tomato varieties, they able to identify more than 200,000 structure variants where uh, they found out that structure variant can influence the gene expression, which leads to various phenotypic uh, change. For example, uh, this structure variation, uh, this particular uh, structure variation, duplication of this particular gene, increase the dosage of this gene leads to increase the food size. So summarizing my talk, the nanopore sequence helps develop a high quality, high contiguous uh, genome uh, assemblies for, for Negra. And we also try to achieve for uh, canola and wheat uh, and we believe that this structure uh, very can be accurately identified using nanopore sequence technology and we see uh, we are working on it uh, we see like a lot of improvements in this uh, the tools of the tools as also helps to identify uh, uh, different kinds of structural variants we plan to uh, associate those structure variants I fed from Braska and B to um, my identity markers that's associated with agronomically important types. That's still in progress. Um, so with that, I'd like to thank my team and my funding partners uh, for, uh, for helping me to do this work. With that, with that I'd like to thank everyone for your time.